Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're going to talk about snail issues. So, aquarium snails are something that people can get into a lot of trouble with. Generally, they want them for one of three reasons. They want them because they look cool and they're interesting, or they want them to do a job, like clean up some algae or turn some substrate around for them and avoid air pockets and things like that. Or they want them to feed some other fish. So I've got myself into the situation where I've got a number of different snails um, I have them in all my tanks in the fish room and I really like them. I don't think they're necessarily pest snails but a lot of people will class them as pest snails so we need to think about when you do get overrun how do you get them out of your tanks? And there are a few ways, some of which could be commercial products such as this which is a snail trap, this thing here and these are things where they go along and they have little gates designed here so the snails can get in. You put a little bit of food in here, the snails can get in here but then they can't get back out again. Um, I've always found these interesting, shall we say. So this particular one is a JBL one. This is the limb clinic. Um, and the idea is that you can set these little gates that you can see here at different heights to see how high you want these little teeth to rise. The idea being here that you don't let in fish. So it's only the snails that can get in. They get in there, you collect that and you pick that out of your tank. Now, like I say, I've always found this interesting because I've never found it a problem getting snails out. So I thought I'll test this against some DIY versions. And I've seen a few DIY versions on the internet and even they seem quite overly complicated. So I thought, I'll put together some of those DIY versions, my version, the commercial version, and we'll put them against each other and see how they do. So the most popular design uses a plastic bottle like this. And basically you take a drill, you take it to the lid, and you make the hole as big as you want, the biggest snail that you want to catch in the lid. Clean that up a little bit with a knife take off the burrs and then depending on the bottle you've got take the bit where the first bit of a lip goes if you can see the line there and cut it in half well cut it there and then next just the idea is that goes in there like so and fits snugly you put the lid back on and do all that first. So the idea is you end up with something like that with a little hole in there. You put a rock or a stone in here to weigh it down when it's in the tank. Some bait in the bottom and then the snails over time go in there and can't find their way back out because you position this so as they can't get at it. Which I obviously can't do. Like so. Versus this with its little gates versus my solution. 35 pence pot, terracotta pot with a little hole in the bottom, put the bait in there, job done. So let's go and test them out. This is a bit of an experiment for me because a lot of the times when you research this on the internet they talk about, well oh, leave the trap in the aquarium for 24 hours and then you'll be able to get snails. Now I sell snails on my website um, and whenever I want to harvest snails I simply take an algae, an algae wafer like this drop it in the tank, some snails come along within about half an hour, pick up the snails, job done. Now if I wanted to get a lot out, I would drop two or three into, like I say, my little, my little cup like this, drop two or three in here, leave it in again, maybe a couple hours at most. I've never had to leave it overnight to catch and I'll get a ton. Basically, the more area of food that you can get into the trap that you're trying to set, the more snails you'll get there congregating. Um, so I want to see if it makes a difference and the thing that I'm worried about so and I think the main difference will be so I can upsize the size of this pot I can get a bigger pot if I want to and um, this bottle here I can put in quite a few algae wafers in there I could get a bigger bottle if I wanted to most of the commercial traps you're kind of limited to the size of the bait you can set so you see that little green disc in there that's the bit that you can put your and bait in and I reckon I could get maybe one algae wafer in there so that does make sense that I might have to leave that in there for a long time but we'll do a time lapse on the camera we'll set all these traps put them in there 
uh, set a time lapse for, I don't know, an hour as a first test and see what goes on and have a look at the different types. So I'll leave this on now as I set the traps. You can see we put them in, I'll try and get them all in frame. Um, it might not look from that camera initially that there is a lot of snails in here, but there is a poop ton, there are loads of them. So we should get a good result. To try and keep it fair, I'm gonna use three algae wafers, the same type of algae wafers for each trap. On the commercial one, the JBL one, the actual bait pod didn't actually leave enough room to even fit one algae wafer. So I've had to crush one of them up and then just put two in the surrounding area here. So we'll stick that one in first. In the DIY trap, I've put a couple of plant weights in there. The three algae wafers are sat there. And the key to this one is you just kind of let the water fill up. And then my one, slightly different, just put the pot in and stick a couple of algae wafers in there. Missed. So, try and position them in roughly the same area, the same distance from the glass, central to the aquarium, make it as fair as possible. Um, now, we'll just leave it and we'll come back in a little while and see if anything's happened. So there we go, they've been in for an hour and a half now, so you've just seen a time lapse and I've just watched the replay of that time lapse. That was pretty interesting. So when I first came in, the first look I had at these guys, I thought, ah, instantly, my method is superior, I've got the most snails inside my cup. But when I looked at the time lapse, what happened was the fish came in, grabbed the algae wafers, took them away, left some crumbs, and it's what the, the crumbs is what the snails have gone after. Um, but there is a ton of snails in there, there must be a good couple of dozen at least. The actual commercial snail trap, it probably has maybe a dozen or so on the top of it, around the side of it, attached to it, but none that I can see inside. Um, so that does make sense that you might have to leave that in there overnight. Again, with the DIY trap, zero snails inside that I can see. Maybe one, maybe one that's made it in. There's one on its way in as well. Um, but again, there are a ton around the outside of it. Which beggars the question, does it really matter whether or not they get inside? Because I can just reach in now, grab any one of them and get a couple of dozen snails. Now, if I leave them in overnight, maybe I'll get a ton of snails in the actual traps. And I'll get more snails. So I don't know. So I think what we have to do is leave them in overnight and see what happens and we'll come back in the morning. Um, so. At least now, the rationale for proving stopping the fish getting in, that seems to hold true. Um, because looking at the time lapse, it seems as soon as my back was turned, the fish were straight in, grabbed the algae wafers and took them out. But it doesn't seem to have stopped me being able to get the snails in the thing. So if you, if you go on my website, for instance, and buy some snails, this works for me. I could put them in there, leave it an hour, come out, and I've got a couple of dozen snails. No problem at all. Um, if it's for snail removal or snail harvesting and I need loads of snails because I want to feed them to another fish or something like that, hmm, I, I still think that would probably be okay actually. So let's see what the difference is if we leave them in overnight at least. Alright, so I've come down a few hours later, um, so the lights have been off for a couple of hours and to be fair, it does say that for the JBL one and most of the commercial ones that you're meant to have the lights off and leave it in overnight. Um, and yeah, that makes a bit of a difference, doesn't it? Anyway, we'll come back and we'll have a look in the morning and see what updates we've got. So a seamless segue into updates. If you do want to keep updated as to what's going on with the channel, check out the links in the description. Um, we've got my Facebook page and group, Instagram where I post pictures almost every day. I'm trying to post every day to all my social medias um, to let you know what's going on. And there's also a join button available. You can go for channel membership if you want. Click the button, you don't have to join straight away, but it tells you all about it. But basically, give you some little behind the scenes clips and keep you up to date with what's going on. But anyway, let's have a look at these things. Um, 
Wow. I think that says quite a lot. So I'll turn the lights on and you can have a proper look. So look at that. Straight away, there is my thing with zero snails in it now. The JBL thing with a gazillion snails in it. I think it's got so many snails in it, it's full. <laughs> They're all trying to get in still. That's amazing. And then the other DIY trap, it's got about one, two, it's got about six in there. So not all that brilliant. Um, I have since seen another design where you basically you do the same thing here, but you do it on the other end as well. That has two ways in, which is apparently a little more successful. But yeah, that's not brilliant so far. But look at that. That's crazy. Anybody want some snails? So what can we say about this? What conclusions can we draw, I guess? I was really surprised. I thought my way was great. Um, and I suppose it still is good if you want to do something quickly. So where I've used this in the past is if someone has bought some snails off my website, I'll use that, give it half an hour, come back, there'll be a bunch of snails. So that did still work technically. Um, but for the volume of snails, that's kind of unbeatable. That is amazing. There must be hundreds and hundreds of snails in there. It's jam-packed full of them. Um, so it goes to show you what can happen if you follow the instructions. So leaving it in overnight, it really has done the trick. That's brilliant. Um, less impressed with this, but I guess you could make some tweaks and some updates. Um, let me know in the comments what kind of DIY ones you've tried. Maybe we'll do another version of this in the future. Uh, but I think that's quite conclusive. That will get rid of your pest snails, even if they are pests. Uh, but some people think, these, these are Malaysian trumpet snails, if I haven't said that already. And they're really good for turning your substrate, um, especially if you have a deep substrate, they will go through that and make sure you've not got any anaerobic pockets of air and nasty gas under the substrate. Um, so they're a really useful snail, but they can get out of control. So that's why it might be useful to know these things. But also, my pea puffers love eating these, so this is a great source of food for them. But as always, uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And now you can click that join button too, if you want to support the channel. But thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!